How many senior senior leaders have you interviewed? Uh, at sort of executive level and and department heads and VPs, fifty or sixty. And that's a lot. Yeah. Do they all have the same personality, or is there a variety of personalities? No, they 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 have, they have a variety of personalities. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, like like they're human beings, so there's a, there's a <laughs> there's a pretty pretty strong range. I mean. They do have lots of characteristics in common. Confidence is is usually fairly, fairly common. What are they looking to get out of it? Are they looking to show a particular side of themselves? Are they looking to present themselves in a certain light? Actually, um, my experience is that when I first start talking to senior leaders like this, it's very rare for them to actually say that they want to use the podcast to project something of themselves, you know, their personality, um, so that people can better understand them and, and better understand where they're coming from. And yeah, it's very rare for them to actually say that first off. Right. And yet, actually, that's a really valuable feature of podcasting and is something that I would advocate for why you should use podcasting. Because I think it's really valuable to get a bit of the leader themselves over, not just their messages, not just their answers to key questions. Those are all important. Those go to shape the content. But actually investing it with something of the leader, uh, him or herself, makes a huge difference. And uh, I'll give you an example that I had early on, and it's it stuck with me so much that actually it's even featured in the, the sort of sample clips that I, that we use on the website. And uh, it was a former, well, not a boss of mine. She was my boss's boss at the time. And she was talking about some very, very big changes that she was rolling out to her department. And um, when I was having the pre-interview chat with her, one of the things that she said, we talked about the style of the interview. And I said, well, how do you how do you want to, to play this? I said to her, look, you know, we've got some fairly blunt questions that people have posted that we know they, they want answered. Are you happy to handle them? And she said, not only am I happy to answer them, I really want you to answer them. I insist that you answer them. And I want you to also make sure you get an answer that you feel is satisfactory and that actually answers the question, no matter how difficult it is. Because, she said, I do want people to see that I am approachable and to see that they can ask me questions, even if they're difficult and challenging questions. So that's what we did. And, and at one point, you'll hear, you hear in the clips, if, if you listen to them, she talks about making her department, which is at the time was a clinical department, one of the best in the industry. And you hear me say, well, yeah, Karin, that was her name. Um, the thing is, everyone says that. Everyone wants to be their, their department to be the best in the industry. What's going to be different this time for you? And uh, yeah, she took it on the chin and said, yeah, you're right. People do say that. And, and I recognize that's a challenge. And then she goes on to, to answer it. The really good thing about it is you could say, okay, well, that's fine or lovely. But um, when the podcast went out uh, subsequently, I met two people in different locations on different occasions who both said to me that they really liked that bit and the fact that that I pressed her. And they also said, completely unprompted, it did make me think that she's someone I can ask a question to. And one of them said, actually, when he saw her, when he met her, at a subsequent meeting at his own site, he did go up to her and and engage her in conversation and asked her about some of the decisions. So it's very rare you get that, that sort of validation, but it was lovely to see that what was happening there was it wasn't just what she said, but it was how she said it and how she conveyed her own belief in the things that she was doing. 